Kim got me over with uh, Box and Bands and uh, I'm very happy to be here in Limerick in gym with uh, Coach Sean Kelly. Uh, Sean, for some people who don't know you, yeah, yeah. um, do you want to just introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Sean anyway and I'm, um, I'm looking after a few pro fighters down in Limerick and I'm, uh, I'm looking after a lot of fighters in Limerick really. I'm trying to get an amateur boxing gym up and running as well at the moment. Uh, so that's basically who I am in the gist of it, you know. Your nickname's Club Lang, is that right? How'd you get that? I ah, just tied along. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Something along the lines of that, yeah. I'm a bit of a moat like Club Lang on it as well, like, you know, that's kind of where it went like that, you know, so. Probably because I'm a bit of a talker like him, probably, I think, you know what I mean? <laughs> I do more talking than fighting, I think, you know? <laughs> but, uh, that's it, Jim, basically. Yeah, sorry. So, you yourself, you actually had quite, am I right in saying, a decorated amateur career? Um, I like want I an elite level fighter. Put it that way, I was quite good, you know. I had a lot of fights, I had a lot of boxing experience. I boxed, Jesus, I suppose, I boxed quite competitively for about 11, 12 years before I started kind of like sitting back from it. But I wasn't at the top level, so, but I fought a lot of top level guys, like, you know. So probably I had the bones of 100 fights, you know, so I fought some good names in there. I was around Great boxing. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was, yeah, it was good, it was good. But um, like I said, I kind of, I come from, a, like, my dad was a boxer, my granddad was a boxer, like, I was always into boxing, like, so it's kind of a sort of thing, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. How did you, you get into coaching? Uh, basically, like, I was going to put a thing in my head that by the time I'm 30, I'll be back in Bible and boxing, most likely in a coaching capacity. Like, through my whole 20s, after I'd start boxing, I kind of hummed and hard with the idea of coming back fighting myself, but it obviously never came to fruition. So I think me and Graham was just chatting one day, and he was thinking about retiring, I think, at the time. So I kind of said, look, I'll help you out with the coaching side of things down in Limerick. Obviously, I had much experience in coaching, but I have a lot of experience in boxing. Like, So I just, I don't know, yeah, one thing led to another anyways, and I started training him. I started giving a hand with another few fighters around. Then I started training Jamie, started training Siobhan. It's just one thing led to another, really, you know, so... Uh, like, I'm not 30 yet, and that was my goal, to be back involved in coaching by then, but I think I have a good base now to kick on going forward. So things are going good at the minute, yeah. very good. Was it was it in any way daunting becoming a, a professional boxing coach like pretty much right off the bat? Like? No, not necessarily. Like I'm, I'm around amateur boxing my whole life. Like I've been doing corners. I've been geez, been bringing kids all over the place, sparring. You know, mm. so it's not really like you know I know the game quite well. Yeah. So it's like I would just be no matter where I am, I'd only be watching the two fighters in the ring and nothing else, and I'd be seeing what we could do to capitalize on the opponent's mistakes. It'd be as simple as that. So nothing would really be too daunting. Mm. So. Yeah, that's kind of basically it. Like, yeah. So, uh, how would you say the the fighters you have at the moment are developing the, the th three? Am I right in saying four? Uh, who have we got at the moment? We've got Siobhan and Graham. We're still waiting to ha have a fight with them. Unfortunately, Graham, we've been had three setbacks now. Four setbacks, is it? Yeah, we said three, official. three. Three official setbacks at the moment. Yeah. So we still actually haven't got on properly but yeah it is Graham, Siobhan and Jamie at the moment yeah. and I'm training a few amateurs as well I had a meeting the other day about getting uh, my own amateur club affiliated which went, which went quite well so hopefully by September I'll have a group of amateurs up and running as well mm -hmm. so that's yeah, that, that's the plan going yeah. forward this year yeah. So if we go through one each, each one individually because yeah. they all have different things that they wanted had to change Graham kind of spoke that yeah. he was coming from uh, well Graham and Siobhan yeah. uh, but Graham said he's improved a lot under you. What is the one thing that you've changed with Graham, would you say? Well, I, th I don't think Graham knew who he was uh, when he started training him. I think they didn't know, did he want to stay on the back foot and try and box, or did he want to stand in the middle and fight with someone? But, you know, there's... He's a little bit of both. Like, me and Graham boxed together for years in San Francis. Like, you know, we boxed, Jesus, I don't know, for a long, long time together. That was quite a good club, like. And I don't think anyone came out of that club that couldn't box quite well behind the jab. And one thing I used to notice with Graham, he just neglected his jab completely, even though he's a really good jab. He's a soapa. You know, he said, soapa with a good jab is going to do really, really well. And he's just never thrown it, like. So we started just working on that initially, and he started getting a really good jab behind him. And then, like he said, he wanted to fight. He wanted to be an exciting fight. So we just started working on taking as little punishment as possible inside in the pocket. So if we're inside, we can fight all day and be exciting, but nobody wants to take shots. Like Nobody wants to risk getting knocked down or even worse, getting knocked out or taking big shots, you know, because you know, it can, can impact you around the line. So at the moment, he's rolling his head a lot better. He's catching, he's countering. He still kind of has that real exciting Mexican style going forward, but he's not taking as many shots. So I think we've improved Graham by his defence has got a lot better and he started working on his jab anyway definitely and he has an identity now he knows what he wants he's going out he's going, looking to take centre of the ring he's looking to put his opponent on the back foot he's a pressure fighter a pressure fighter with a good jab so he has an identity basically now mm -hmm. you know that's in my opinion uh, 
Jamie, Jamie Morrissey, he was someone who, who was transitioned over from one sport to the other. How was that for you? You know what? Initially, if you'd said to me 12 months ago, Jamie would be as good as he is today, I probably would have like struggled to agree with it. But it, initially, it was difficult. He, re, you know, he came out with really wide elbows, obviously coming from a different sport. But like you look at the guy, like he's fucking huge. You know, he's a classes for his weight, so you know all the tools to work with. So another guy, like I said, the most important shot in the game is your jabs, your bread and butter. Um, so we just got his massive left arm out there, just get him banging it out all day. Like, you can't pass it, you can't beat him. It's as simple as that. So he's standing up nice and tall, chin is down, elbows are tight, and everything is working behind his jab. And uh, he's a good right hand. He's starting to, he's really starting to loosen up uh, his upper body now as well. He's starting to slip and dip and come back and counter and stuff like that as well. So I think he's, um, he's made massive strides, huge strides, in comparison to where he was 12 months ago. He's a completely different fighter. Obviously, I know he came from a different yeah, sport. Yeah, big, big, big improvements. Now. So I'm really, really pleased with his improvements. So, um, yeah, I think, I suppose, Jamie, you know, is, uh, at the moment, he's an upright boxer who can bang. But he's starting to become... Every week we train, he's getting a little bit more elusive and he's counter and coming back with big shots and things like that. So I think he's going to be one to watch now next year and his next couple of fights, definitely. So. And uh, Siobhan, lastly, there. Yeah, Siobhan, the same again. I think Siobhan kind of struggled with her identity as well. She wasn't 100% sure what, she, what way she wanted to fight. But um, basically, I've kind of had Siobhan boxing now, really. You know, look, like, you know, she's fighting super featherweight. She's really tall for super feather. Like, you look at her, she could be a welterweight, like, in the size of her. She's got quite a good reach. So what we're working on at the moment is, you know, just Siobhan kind of coming in, same again, working on her jab, but coming in and out, using, like... Scoring second phase and third phase attacks. Like you must bear in mind, she she uh, fights over a two minute period, so you don't need to reserve as much as the two boys would need to. They're fighting over three minutes, and mm. ideally, hope for, we're hoping for Graham to be fighting eight rounds next year, and Jamie to be fighting six rounds maybe in his next fight. Please God, um, Siobhan will probably going to her next fight as a four two minute round. It's only eight minutes, so she can afford to be up on her toes and using you know her attacks a lot, like in and out a lot more than the boys can. So I think she's gonna. Gone for that kind of, I won't say Katie Taylor style, like you know, because there's no one that can implement it like Katie. But at the end of the day, she's going in trying to score, come back and then score again, you know. So she's really changed a lot as well. Things are going well with her. What do you think is your lemma on uh, on your stable of number? What's the number? Look, I mean, if a guy is good and he wants to train, there's no problem. <laughs> like the door is always open, like you know. Like I said, I'll, yeah, like there's. It's a crazy to train. Yeah, like I said, you have to be a bit mad to come down here training. There's some, there's some real charisma down here. There's no doubt about that. Like you know, as you can probably see. But uh, yeah, like you came in today, there's only there's only three the lads, three of the pros, and one of the amateurs was training. But like we could, like I think we had a session here. It was a Friday ground. Yeah, I think we had a good twelve or fifteen training, and everyone was just going in, getting their own sparring. It was brilliant. Like I'm very, I'm a big believer of sparring. Like mm. big, big believer of sparring, and like. Not going to kill each other, but hard sparring too. None of this like tippy tappy shit. Like, oh. like there's not like you get into the ring, and you think, oh yeah, we just done a few easy rounds sparring, come up to this fight, like, and a guy comes over and he lands a big overhand right in your chin. You're gonna panic, like, you know. So you need hard sparring, and we, I think we're all in on the same understanding down here that we're big into sparring, and that's the way we do things, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right, well, uh, excited times, Sean. Especially with everything opening back up as well. A lot of fights yeah. coming back, so we're exci- fucking coming for a while. We're so- coming. It's uh, exciting times now, so thanks very much for your time, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks very much for your time, Karen. appreciate you coming down, bro. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thanks, man.